Tonight in Colorado Springs, when we say there will be fireworks, we mean it figuratively and literally. Haji Berry is the league's reigning MVP, and Colorado Springs hasn't missed a beat from last year's upstart offensive juggernaut. While San Diego is traveling this 4th of July, and for Landon Donovan's money, Alejandro Guido might be the league's most valuable player. San Diego Loyal and Colorado Springs switchbacks start right now. From the home of the Air Force Academy, we welcome you to a special Independence Day edition of the USL Championship on ESPN. Widener Field is glimmering tonight. The Switchbacks welcome San Diego Loyal. Here's a look at the Western Conference. San Antonio has pulled four points clear of Colorado Springs, then a five-point gap to San Diego. Make no mistake, three critical points on the line here tonight. Welcome in, everybody. We hope you've had a safe and happy fourth wherever you may be. That's Devin Kerr. Mike Watts on hand as well. Dev, these two teams have created so much offense, 72 goals combined this year. And quite simply, every time we watch them play, we're leaving telling people, are you not entertained? And mostly when we come into the games, we talk storylines, right? What do we want to talk about? What's hot? What's not? This game speaks for itself. Top three attacking units defensively, top 11 between the two teams. They've got nines. They've got good goalkeeping, wondrous midfield play. This could be a playoff match that it could even be the Western Conference final come November. Yeah, we certainly hope so the way they're playing right now. Let's talk about some players to watch in this game. For the switchbacks, that's as fearsome a trio as this league can offer. Six players in the entire championship that are top 25 in both goals and assists. Three of them play for Brendan Burke in Colorado Springs. That's not fair. <laughs> that's a cheat code. They're incredible in transitional moments. The difference this year, though, is that in possession, they've become much better at breaking teams down in a low block. All right, Dev, how do they do that? Let's go ahead of the curve and describe what makes the switchbacks and their stars special. We are going to pick out the only player who's top 10 in goal and assist, and that's Haji Berry. This year was about the team, not an individual. Depth and unselfish play within the final third. He's dropped into the 10 spot, been given a freedom to roam. This license to drift and his space is anywhere along the front line. So you will naturally see him come 40 or 50 yards from goal. That's a different change than last year. He distributes down into the corner. But when he gets into the final third, what's the decision making? Last year, he breaks into the box, tries to get off a, a crazy shot from down in the corner. This year, he's smart. He's got the attacking pieces around him and he waits patiently up top draws the defenders in, little layoff, and they go to work. Meanwhile, for San Diego, when your manager is Landon Donovan, you know you should be able to score, and this group has this year. These guys are right there as well. Kyle Vassell, unfortunately, out tonight. Red card suspension midweek against Orange County. It's a massive loss, but this is a team coming in that needed an attacking presence. They've had good goalkeepers. They've had good defenders and good midfielders. The problem is, is the ninth spot has usually been a loney, 5, 10, 15 games maybe, that position finally locked down this year, and three of them are carried by it on the screen. All right, so that loyal front four against that switchback front three. We celebrate everything that makes this game great. Two offensive juggernauts. It's Colorado Springs in San Diego. We've got lineups and kickoff when we return to the USL Championship on ESPN.
Colorado Springs hosting on this national holiday. Switchbacks against San Diego Loyal from Widener Field. This is the USL Championship on ESPN. Mike and Devin to take you through the action. Let's start with the lineup for Brendan Burke in Colorado Springs, Dev. Decimated with injury, only four field players on the bench. The good news is one of which who's been struggling with a hamstring, Cam Lindley, back into the midfield. Rotation on the right side with Malik Johnson comes up into the midfield. It's Amo, Barry, Galena. This team runs really deep when they start to move into the final third, but transitionally, they usually play a very high line. Congested fixtures wonder if they stay deeper to absorb more pressure from San Diego Loyal. Landon Donovan has to make the one change aforementioned in the open. Thomas Among comes in in the lineup. Now the lineup card, interestingly enough, had Moshe Bonnie at left mid, Nick Moon at right back. I don't see that. There's no way they're gonna make six tactical changes when you can just flip and flop in the nine spot. Guido into the middle, Blake up into the midfield when they start to move forward. Somehow this is the first ever meeting between these two sides. Loyal in the league since 2020. Colorado Springs, a new lease on life. It's the only game in the championship tonight, and we hope you're ready to enjoy the game with us here on the 4th of July. Colorado Springs hosting San Diego Loyal. Colorado Springs 6-2 and two on their home field this year, and they seem to score at will and in bunches. Don't have fireworks at the end of the night, Deb. There's a good chance we'll see some before we get there then. They're one of the few teams whose style translates to away matches. As well. I mean, they're split right down the middle with the way that they've been playing. And I mentioned the, the change with Haji Berry, how much deeper he comes. But tactically, it's more possession oriented this year. They were still a high flying attacking unit last year. A lot of balls sprayed up over the top and moved quickly from one end to the other. But they are so good now of having the patient side of their personality step out, where if it doesn't go, they can slow it down, move eight, nine guys 40 yards from net, and still be able to break through the deep blocks that have been some of these defensive shapes thrown at them. Back from Moshe Bani, and there's Colin Martin. Adams. Guido. Colin Martin. Elijah Martin. Two Adams, two Martins. On the field for San Diego tonight. coming in you really hope this isn't him going down saying I can't go this has to be that he's impeded by the ace rap can't blame him it's amazing how much something as small as a little piece of fabric wrapped around your leg can really mess with your personality on the field we weren't even sure if he was going to be able to go tonight it was nice to see him within the 11 Sure, it's certainly refreshing for Brendan Burke. Staggeringly few options available to the switchbacks manager. Early ball played here for San Diego. Or without Kyle Vassell, their leading scorer. Knotted out by Lindley. Free kick won by the switchbacks. And to the point coming in within the lineup, the card that was turned in had 
Among up top, Guido underneath, Moshabani on the left, Jack Blake up into the midfield, and Nick Moon at the right back spot. I just didn't see it because it affects so many different things on the field. And Landon Donovan was quite frank with us. So we're not changing for anybody. Doesn't matter home or away, their style rings true as well. And so for the sake of efficiency, even though it is the same personnel, why would you move so many different players that have played incredibly well all season long? It didn't make sense. Dev, Landon told us, why do you spend three years creating an identity and then you play a good team home or road and change everything? You don't. That's given away cheaply to Johnson, but recovered by Moon. Have you seen a progression to the point where that identity is as firm for Landon Donovan as it is right now? Yes, I would also add along to it that the real argument within that is the level of efficiency. Because what they're doing now, A, tactically, it's, it's not groundbreaking, and I don't mean that in a negative light. It's very easy to see on the scouting report that they're going to take their right back, move really high, almost play with a flat back three, jump him up into the middle. The right midfielder comes in, starts to overload, basically operating with two tens. The difference is, is can you do it at a nine or a ten every single game as opposed to some sevens, some eights, some fours, things like that. They've gotten better every single year because of Landon Donovan and that vision, because of Nate Miller and the supporting cast in the technical area. Asked Landon what his 4th of July tradition might be. He said, well, it seems like I'm always playing or coaching now. <laughs> two wins, two losses, two draws on the 4th of July as a player. Played seven more games on July the 3rd. Well, I did say to you that even though maybe he was playing on the 3rd, it's still a business trip. You're flying back the next day, so you don't have the luxury of seeing the fireworks. Most of the events took place the night prior. Landon, part owner and the head coach and technical director of this San Diego Loyal side. Charlie Adams appears likely to strike. Alam Radosov is the referee for this game. struck in front danger off the set piece which has been par for the course for Colorado Springs this year Jeff Caldwell pulls it in good service from Charlie Adams skims away from Lindley it's a shaky moment there Adams, one of the first guys they really took a look at when they started this franchise. Said on all the internal metrics, he scores high for this San Diego team. Martin. Guido. Guido slips it ahead. Among. Thomas Among, who scored six goals this season, former Colorado Springs player, getting into the attack. And the problem is, is he's stuck on the right foot. This is the one thing that you could really be critical of for Thomas Among, is the inability to cut it back across with his left foot. And that's the better option here. Now, you're locked down in the midfield if you're Moshe Bonnie, but he had Jack Blake coming in unmarked on the back post right at the top of the six. You step on this, Mike, hit it with your left, or even pull it back and then use your right foot to come square back across, and you're up 1-0. Among three goals for the switchbacks last year, the Cameroonian forward. Malik Johnson. Off of Adams. A foul from Elvis Amo.
Dev, four years ago, we'd watch a Colorado Springs switchback game, and it was more abound. It really was. What they've done with this new stadium downtown is night and day. It's like an entirely different franchise got dropped here. Let's be clear, that has no impact on Steve Trichu or Walde Harris, who were in those positions. It was just different. The amount of money that's been put into the organization on the field, off the field, the stadium, branding, you name it, has given them another step. They just, I can remember having conversations with those guys, and they'd be on road trips flying in academy players because everybody else was just unavailable. But their, their squad was only 17 or 18 players in general. They'd go 14 or 15 on a three-game road swing that was over 10 days. That's not a level that you can maintain. It's really simple. And yet now, you normally look down the bench and go, dear Lord. Now, right now, they've got a lot of injuries, but Brendan Burke has done a ridiculous job out here in Colorado Springs turning this around to be one of the most feared teams in the Western Conference. There's Brendan Burke, second year at the helm of this switchback side. You can see he's gotten a positive result in 35 of the 40 games he's been the manager. You know, Deb, it was funny. They just got Jairo Henriquez from the Salvadoran national team. He's due to arrive here sooner than later. Obviously was watching Brendan Aronson play with the U.S. Now Paxton Aronson playing with the under-20s. He was sitting watching the U.S. play against El Salvador in Nations League, and he's trying to tell his kid, hey, look, I coached him, and I'm about to coach him. Pretty impressive. And that's the other side of things for Brennan Burke understanding at so many different age levels of what it takes to progress a player through the professional system. His time with the Philadelphia Union, better portion of a decade. Even with the change from within, stayed constant. Didn't matter if a player was 16 years old, 26 years old, or a guy like James Chambers, who I'm assuming it's somewhere around 36. We never really got the full age breakdown on him, did we? <laughs> of course, now one of the assistants for Brendan Burke but the guys that you just talked about, and he's brought the same mentality here to Colorado Springs, where you look on the field and you've got young players, starlets, like a, a Misha Galina, right, and brought him, but everybody knows about him. How about a defender like Isaiah Foster? 19 years of age, approaching his, excuse me, 20, approaching his 21st, right around the corner. Youngster on the bench tonight, Tyler Tate, from Real Colorado Youth. He knows how to push them to the limits, get the most out of them, and most importantly, help them make the best decision for their career, college or pro. He recognizes that, and that's a very difficult thing to do, to be unselfish in nature, that it doesn't always have to be the pro route for your team, but it will be the best thing for the player. Taken back by San Diego. Guido on the trot. Look at that catch an arm. Guido slides in again. It's overcooked from Moshabani. Caldwell. Stay with the switchbacks. Chavaria ahead from Cam Lindley. Amo. Mahoney. And in by Moon. Martin. A whiff through in San Diego, approaching the final third. Good step from Galena. A bow for Galena. Beware. 
Michi Galunia lost his footing. You can get away with a bit more on the left side for Colorado Springs tonight because of the speed that you've got with Tristan Hodge and Michi Galina. Galina, although is usually very high as he pushes up on the field, he doesn't have to track back as deep. Obviously, if necessary, he will come. It's just the fact that with Guido coming in, there's space there. And then when Jack Blake comes up, he's going to operate in this half space where, okay, how high can I go? Because defensively, I've still got to drop back and mark Michi Galina. But as I go, I know that he's still going to be over there on one shoulder. Tristan Hodge over on my right. Good look at it right now. He's just fixated between the two. And as they rotate into this flat three, the idea, and you're already seeing it 15 minutes in, is that Colorado Springs is pulling back about 20, 25 yards deeper than they normally are. In most of their games, Mike, they come very high. They'll attack you at the top of your 18. Because of the amount of games that they've had to play in such a finite amount of time, they've got to sit deeper and absorb more than normal and then spring further than used to. Adams forward. That's something that Colorado Springs did against Sacramento that really caused problems for the Open Cup semifinalist, Moon. Nick Moon, the danger man, leading along. There's a touch cleared away. Caldwell got enough off Adam service to poke it free, and Oxford drives it out to touch. Little surprise we don't see Nick Moon cut this back in. The one on one that has been so good for San Diego Loyal out on this left hand side. Vintage step over cut inside and hit it instead. Great vision. Not exactly sure if Charlie Adams thought he was actually going to get to this. A bit surprised. He's off step when he comes back across. Very good positioning by Jeff Caldwell. He's off the front post just to touch. If he stays more square within the goal, Mike, and on that byline, he can't get to it, and it comes across the six. Moon appealing for a handball. He stopped. He aired. Mahoney goes down. Colin Martin will get a talking to. Squarely on the right foot. Ball through just beyond Barry. Area. Down into the corner, Galena. Galena Central Johnson pulls away, chance to fire away. The flex with Adams there. that plays seemingly some games with snow. A big rainbow and a little bit of rain shouldn't scare anybody away here today. They tried to do it against San Antonio. That rain delay only lasted a little bit, though. <laughs> it certainly didn't scare them off. Fourth time ever, 1-2 matchup in the USL Championship. San Antonio come away the victors. Sun beaming down into the final third. San Diego approaches. Cut across. Adams got into the 18, was pushed away. Beyond Moon. Like to thank 
tonight's sponsor of the match, Pike Street National Bank. Make well, be well. Haji Berry. Martin, flex free, Echeverria, and through Lindley, splayed out for Galena. Switchbacks off to a stunning start this year. They lost in the Open Cup, lost their following game, first of the season. A couple defeats. Streak snapped with a 3-0 win over Sacramento. A game in which both managers seemed to indicate they felt like their team was on no gas. Guido. Blake. This is the IQ of Jack Blake where I told him he's going to operate in this gray area out on this right hand side where he's got to be very careful positionally matched up against Galena and Hodge as the attack starts to come. He just reads the fact that the ball pops out, steps right into it. Very impressive over the past couple of games, his ability to operate on the right back spot. Amo, excellent flag down, Barry across and with a deflection, Koke Vegas is there, otherwise that finds Galena. Let's be clear here, it's not just the fact that he's on the back line, it's the amount of ground that he has to cover to track back in the transitional moments. I mentioned earlier the tactical breakdown for San Diego Loyal, how it's very customary for them to step off and really operate in a three. Stoneman, Adams, Martin, of course, right now, and then Colin Martin will drop deeper underneath with Charlie Adams starting to spin out to the left. But as that comes, you leave the right flank overexposed a ton for a guy who spent the bulk of his career within the midfield it was a change just for him to be on the outside of that flank more for san diego Loa, yet alone from a more restricted position and yet the exchange itself has been natural as it possibly can with the depth that they have the fact that he can step in and still operate at a high level very impressive past years it felt like if metcalf missed any time it was tough to keep san diego on the rails and now you have Jack Blake there now. Jack Metcalf was irreplaceable. Camden Riley can play there. Morgan Hackworth can drop in if need be. They pick up Nico Boxall. And again, it's it's one thing to have an identity from a playing standpoint. The ability to operate 16 to 18 field positions deep within that and still maintain consistency is the more impressive part. Part of an identity that's made them one of the most lethal teams attacking wise including keeping it on the deck something landon donovan seems to beam right through the phone when he talks about foul from dennis erdman It's an extreme profile. He runs like a gazelle. Flicks that outside. Jack Blake stuttering into the box, and there's Hodge. 
regular in the national team for Trinidad and Tobago. Galena, Barry turns on Martin. Return, Barry. It's close, overcommitted on the side. That's where, when Jack Blake comes too high and gets it wrong, you can get yourself in trouble. Guido's got to track all the way back and replace Jack Blake, but as he comes, that ball's got to come sooner. Right there, you play it clean across. It's a faster, flat ball, the space easier to step into for Haji Berry, then that is trying to play catch up. Off kilter on the second touch, then can't find a mo. That's a real good look, though, of the difference of Haji Berry, much like we showed you in the open, of coming down in. You know, there's a forbearance within his game of just an understanding that I got to sit. I got to stay right here. I don't have to be the guy, but I can be a guy involved in the team buildup. Twenty-five minutes in, scoreless in Colorado Springs, number two and number three in the Western Conference, sitting behind San Antonio. Switchbacks, a blistering start to the year. San Diego making a good run in the Open Cup, took LA Galaxy to the cusp, then watched Sacramento knock them off in the quarterfinal a couple weeks ago. Turn among Mahoney walked it over the line. Celebrating its 75th anniversary, Select is proud to be the official match ball supplier of the USL Championship. Choose what you play with at SelectSportAmerica.com. Select League's Choice, Player's Choice. Double rainbow today, Dev. Phoned a friend, called in a favor. I don't have those kinds of contacts. It's a pretty picturesque scene here. We are so fortunate that as the growth continues of the beautiful game within the United States, the championship following suit. It's the depth of the talent pool, coaching, academies, stadiums. Think about how much has changed since you and I started spending time together. Apologies for that, by the way. That, Picking up the dinner tab and all. It's been a little while now. This is game 197 for you and I. Is it really? True story. That's it? <laughs> That's it. <laughs> Pulled over Zealous from Blake. Is that enough to be in the will, or how does that work? I doubt it. Okay. Can't blame me for asking, though. I could, but I won't. Hold up by a mo. Vegas, a little bit of time in La Liga, helped Mallorca earn promotion to the first division in Spain. And Donovan planned to visit. That didn't happen. I'm not talking to him on Zoom, finding the right match between the team and the player. Throw here for Hodge.
Loyal a little bit confused as to how to try and break this team down right now. I'm not surprised that Colorado Springs have dropped up. I'm exactly sure they saw that coming, though. Even with the amount of games that switchbacks have had to play, they still have opened things up. You know, the difference is against Sacramento Republic. They did it in finite moments here. They have come deeper and deeper. As mentioned, 20, 25 yards and the difference, Mike. And playing through the middle is one thing. They don't really have an option. Quick fire, though, and you don't have that target man in Vassell. Among coming in, Moshabani, you don't have that extension up top to really challenge the shape of the two center backs. Lindley. Lindley again. A free kick. That's going to cost a card. Guido showing a card. And San Diego, they're not afraid to brawl a little bit, as we've come to find out. No, this is unnecessary, though, for Guido. He doesn't agree with the call from the referee. That's fine. Take the lickings and move on from it. That's cute. In theory. Better job playing out of the back for a guy coming into the league this week. Leading in chances created with the hamstring injury, playing deeper. Echeverria coming higher, and they're just struggling within the build on the central side of things because there are so many players. You're basically looking at six within the midfield for San Diego Loyal at this point in time. And they're frustrated. It's good to see they've figured this out. You see Cam Lindley there. His sister Cassidy, part of the Indy 11 W League side that just won the Great Lakes Division, had the opportunity to call her games back at University of Florida, now Greg Rakestraw gets that opportunity. Congrats to Indy 11, congrats to the Lindley family, and Super League is coming in 2023 following the Women's World Cup. Professional soccer within the USL ecosystem. And my favorite thing about Cam Lindley, though, I mentioned the chances created, is when you look at the list of players around him, almost every single player in the top 10 except for one is an extreme attack-minded player. Antoine Openo, front line for Detroit City. Canardo Forbes, Pittsburgh Riverhounds. Enzo Martinez, Roro Lopez, Sammy Gadiri. Now some of them are given the freedom to sort of do whatever they want within the system. But the two in the top 10 that aren't are Cam Lindley and Justin Portillo. Deep lying eights and sixes that spray the ball 30, 40 yards. Some of the best in the entire championship. Amo, this can happen in a hurry for Colorado Springs. Barry Adams. That'll be a corner for the switchbacks. There's that trio we talked about at the top, Dev, coming down in unison, flocking toward goal. He's not exactly sure where the next run is going to come from. If it is from Colorado Springs, Misha Galina is happy to run this thing the entire way. But here's the possession that I talk about. The orientation is different. When you go, it's not one and done. It's the next player up. Galina starts on the left, ends up on the back post run. Much better, by the way, from Elvis Samo over the past five games. The understanding within the system that he also doesn't have to be that target man up top. He too can come down in and then get involved in the buildup. Lindley. Okay, Vegas didn't get to that. Falls for Johnson. Malik Johnson. Tightest possible angle to try and squeeze that in. And yet you don't doubt him. This is the one major change that you've gotten for Colorado Springs over the past three matches, though. He came on as a substitute, three back. Now he's moved himself into the lineup. Malik Johnson, they've had injury issues, yes, but specifically at the right back spot. Maka King was the planned starter coming in this year, Mike. And yet he has been in and out because of his injury concerns. Malik Johnson has basically taken that spot and said, okay, this is mine. But because of the lack of depth, you have to bump him higher. This is where they wanted him to play, but he was going to be a depth piece. Instead, now he's in the 11. Getting that comfort level back on the attacking side of the ball is something that he's going to have to pick up quickly because of the way that this team plays. It's balanced on all fronts. You can't just rely on those three. Remember, no Zach Zandy. He's one who's also comfortable in that spot. He got injured a few back. And he's going to be out a couple of weeks. Yeah, painful loss on the tackle from PC that earned him the rare 
red card from the disciplinary committee after the fact. Tossed away by Elijah Martin. And if Burke looks on as Matt Mahoney to throw, he was quiet at Bethlehem Steel. He trialed a couple years there, went to Sacramento, and maybe the most consistent player Brendan Burke this year. Mahoney will throw again. Barry waiting to throw. This is a switchback team and a loyal team that usually don't stay scoreless for long. 72 combined goals this season at the midway point. Slide by Blake. Covered here by the switchbacks. All the way through somehow. Haji Berry scores! Didn't have to wait long at all. He tied the record for goals a year ago. He lights this candle again. Barry, yes, but how good is this ball? It takes time to develop a boatload of patience, but the bad, bad man, that is Cam Lindley. Watch him pick up possession here. Head up the entire way. Surveying, can I go to the right? Can I find the left? And yet a parting of the seas with Haji Barry right down the middle. Conversation between Adams and Guido. Gotta talk there. One of you has to get it. You both can't get it wrong. This is the most dangerous man in the entire championship. Made it way too easy just inside the top of the box. He's got a chance to work on that goal celebration time and time again. Haji Berry backs number nine this year. What's worse, the amount of time you give Cam Lindley or the fact that Haji Berry's wide open in the middle of the field with room to run? One was a defensive miscue. The other is a systemic mistake. Absolutely. And you got to find a way to put pressure on Cam Lindley. Absolutely. But even if in that situation with Barry, if you drop off more often than not, you keep him in front of you. You cannot allow him in behind, whether it's the ball at his feet or the opportunity to run. I understand that Kyle Adams wanted to step up into it. Guido is coming back. That's a conversation, though, that if he stays just a bit, you give Guido an opportunity to get back to it. You create a 2v1 defensively for Loyal to allow yourself to break down Haji Berry. Instead, you break yourself, and then he breaks your back. Adams. From Martin. Took the push from Mahoney and does well. And another mistake. We just talked about one on the other end of the field. Why dive in? Arms away from the body. Matt Mahoney, the guy who Brendan Burke says is there's no world without him on my back line. Trains like an animal. It's that monster mentality. In that situation, you get it wrong. Malik Johnson's right there with you. Set piece. Falls to the backside and right at Caldwell. Smashed header down. He's perhaps a little bit lucky on that from Grant Stoltman. We mentioned goalkeepers coming in of how good they've been. We're going to talk about some of them at halftime for our midseason awards. Jeff Caldwell easily could be in the mix for goalkeeper of the year. Right place, right time. 
the movement on their first chance where he came to the near post. That's another one of those same ones, Mike, where you've just set yourself up positionally to make a save. Yeah, it comes right to you. But if he cheats to the back a little bit, he's closer in proximity to Kyle Adams. Doesn't have as much time to react. Could slip by him. Colorado Springs 12 unbeaten when they score the opening goal dating back to October. They've won all six games. They have not dropped a point when they've scored the first goal of a game this season. Bounces off of Guido. Shabani was chasing. He and Galena back and forth, and it's Galena on the run. The touch to that kept it from Barry. San Diego spring it the other way. Chested back by Among. Guido leading Moshabani. Pumps the brakes. Guido. The hair behind Johnson is there. Adams stepped up alongside Barry. doesn't know the altitude. Got to be better with the decision making for Mishi Galina as they start to go here. Haji Berry running in behind, head up. Drop this thing in the corner. You stick it in the corner, Berry picks it up. You come back to the inside. You create another opportunity for yourself. That's the third one this half for Mishi Galina. It's just been a bit off. The amount of games that they've had to play, distance covered. Mentally, the, the fatigue is just as bad as the attrition your body has to deal with. Is this four and 11? Four and 11 days. And usually you think, well, at least they rotated. Colorado Springs <laughs> literally does not have that option. Martin. Had her speared away. And recovered by Guido. Lindley for Galena on a free kick. That's going to come with penance for Stoneman. You could make the argument even further, talking to Brendan Burke about all of these matches. 4 and 11, they're going to play 9 and 35. Certainly not going to do them any favors. However, Loyal is making it easier for this game in a stop start nature at times. Brief respite. Grant Stoneman, Kyle Adams, maybe even Jack Blake. Three out of the four on the back line, some questionable decisions. Elijah Martin, very consistent. The problem is, is so much of the game being played within the midfield. And with the way that Colorado Springs are trying to attack more and more on the outside as they recognize the fact they just don't have the numbers inside to counteract what's going on. It's become that much more difficult to maintain the space that you'd like. I would like to see them go a bit more direct. You don't have to change your style. You just have the ability with guys like Moshibani, Among, and Nick Moon to stretch the game. We haven't seen that, though. Right, everything is, okay, let's touch back to the inside. We create numbers and the ability to overload, but then it quickly breaks down. It's because of the fact that Colorado Springs is dropping so deep. They're keeping the game in front of them, and the game then gets reforced to the outside, but the time that they get there, they've already tracked back. You're closing the space down because of your unwillingness to attack a bit more direct. They're trying to test the constitution of Colorado Springs a bit more. Get out of play. Coming up at halftime, you better bet Devin and I, because we don't get a vote in the end of season awards, we made our own. Does Brendan Burke win Coach of the Year? Oh. Does Landon Donovan? Oh. Did we decide to go with the best dressed award or did that get scrapped till the end of the season? No, we, we scrapped it. 
that doesn't that doesn't go on the, the yearly ballot for a USL championship. I, we also had worse dressed earlier this year on USL All Access, and let's just say that the person we mentioned does not listen to that show. Guido, Alejandro Guido leading Moon with an opening. That's a moonshot. The good news is, is with all the possession that they maintain, they have such a good understanding of where the next run is going to come from. There's no guessing games at all. Guido steps in. Well done by Thomas Among and Moshe Bani to maintain that high line. Normally, that's Kyle Vassell, and he's dragging two players with him. You don't have that luxury because of his suspension. So you have to wait for the play to present itself. I couldn't tell you the last time, 45 minutes into a game, that we hadn't seen a deep-lying player on the right side for Loyal down into the attacking third. Is what? that paying respect to what Galena does, or is that a, a genuine shift in philosophy for this game? It's not an overall philosophy. It's the personnel that I was talking about. Yes, you have to be careful with Galena, and they are addressing that of sorts. The problem is, is you have changed, because you've said to Jack Blake, Okay, well, we're going to bump you up a little bit, but don't step too far. Jack Metcalf would be all the way on the pilot. He would be doing 100-meter <laughs> sprints, his best impersonation of Jack Gurr from Sacramento Republic. Yep. Right up and down that entire flank. They don't have that, though. And so although in one-on-one -on -one defensive moments he's made some good tackles, you can tell that he truly understands when to go and when to stay. He also doesn't necessarily know when he can take some chances on his own and get away with it. Understanding where the marks are and gambling, two very different things. Erdman. Yeah, by Vegas. San Diego had to do it the hard way against Orange County. Last time out, the reigning champion, two goals to one. In the personified, the grit required to make a deeper run than the Loyal have ever made in the postseason. Lost last year to San Antonio in the quarterfinal in the West. Trying to find an equalizer before the intermission. Ball popped over the top with Siki Moshibani. Moon skewed it left of the post. by Jeff Caldwell. And there's halftime. It's that man again. It's Haji Berry's ninth of the year to put the switchbacks ahead. Haji Berry said that he wanted to be part of the team. That's great. Well, he's also pretty good by himself, though, too. Haji Berry, nine goals. That's tied for fourth best in the league. And of course, still up top with six assists. Ken Lindley now can join him with the fact that he picks up his six. Great to see him more involved in the game. Loyal have to find a way to create an attacking presence. They went 37 minutes without challenging Jeff Caldwell in goal. That's not good enough. Nate Miller, Landon Donovan, they will discuss how to find a way to get among more involved in the final third. All right, Colorado Springs with a lead. Who knows, maybe we'll be talking about some of these players in our midseason awards. That's coming up in a moment. First half highlights, stats, and more. You're watching the USL Championship on ESPN.
Welcome back to Widener Field in Colorado Springs. Happy 4th of July, everybody. It's that mid-season staging post for the Switchbacks and San Diego Loyal. Welcome back into our booth, everybody, with Devin Kerr, Mike Watts on hand, and we must be, Devin, the two people in the league with the most clout and yet the least ability to vote on end-of-season awards. I'm barely allowed on television. You think they're going to give me a vote for these items? Do you want to try our own set of awards? Okay, let's do it. All right, let's take a look at our mid-season awards because we've gotten to that point. A couple of them unanimous. We thought about Trevor James and Alan Marcina and Brendan Burke. How about in Memphis, what Ben Pierman has accomplished? A full half point better per game than they were a year ago. What's more, they've got a genuine pressing identity and they create a lot of chances. Yeah, how about when you change it over to Defender of the Year? We also shared the same sentiment in this situation, and we went with Mitchell Tainer from San Antonio FC. 17 games of the season, the only player on the team that has played every game, all 90 minutes. There's an Ironman, and at the exact same position. Top 10 in most major defensive statistical categories in the USL Championship. He can bag a couple goals, too. How about we talk about Newcomer of the Year? This is where we diverge. I'm going to stay with San Diego. Go with the guy not playing tonight, Kyle Vassell. 10 goals this year, third most in the league, but he's doing it for the best scoring offense in the league. He makes everyone around him better. I don't mind that pick at all, and I respect it. I was close to going with Vassell as well, but for me, I had to look and change. I stayed in the Western Conference, so I went with the Oakland Roots, and I went with Otar Magnus Carlson. The Oakland Roots did a ton at the tail end of last season. Scoring goals wasn't one of them. <laughs> 37 in its entire campaign. They've already got 30, and over 30% come from that man right there. Set pieces in the air, down in the box. He can do it all. Been brilliant for Juan Guerra and Co. so far. And he's made some amazing plays late in games. Speaking of that, goalkeeper of the year, I'm going with Detroit. What is Detroit City without Nate Steinwasher? Maybe not even a playoff team. Has he let in a couple soft goals lately? Maybe, but in the Open Cup against Columbus, significant games along the way. He stood the eye test, and the advanced metrics really good, too. For me, coach and goalkeeper could have easily been a handful of players, right? Mm. So you have Nate Steinwasher. You could have gone Evan Newton. You could have gone Matt Van Okel. A couple of guys throw their names in the next short and far. I go with Kyle Morton. Single-handedly has changed the defensive dynamic for Louisville City. 0.58 goals against. That's best in the USL Championship. Seven shutouts. That's tied for first. He might be the MVP, but for me, the MVP is actually Mitchell Tainer. No one ever picks defenders 
but that's the best team in the league. He's their most consistent, and to this point, for my money, best player on that team. I know he's our defensive player of the year. I think he's more than that. I think he's the most valuable player in the championship this year. It's strange how our brains always seem to think alike, Mike, and I'm going to go with, just kidding, that's not going to happen. <laughs> Haji Berry, 28 open play chances created. That's best in the league. He's right there for goals. He's right there at the top for assists. Actually tied for first. The difference in his role, we talked about in the Open coming in, how much more dynamic he makes this team. Coming into the season, it was a team mentality. He's proven that and more. You can't convince me it's nobody else. All right, that's why they don't give us the votes. That's our midseason awards. We've got first half highlights, stats, and another half to come here at Widener Field in Colorado Springs after these messages. Welcome back to the USL Championship on ESPN. Voodoo Ranger sounds like the kind of beer David Bowie would drink. That's an IPA. That's Devin and my kind of thing. <laughs> uh, Rita's Italian Ice, although I'm impartial to Ralph's Cream Ice. We can get down with this on the fourth. I'm a milkshake kind of guy. Yep. That's it. Yeah. And meanwhile, whether it's I, I, I'm more intrigued by the hat than I am the food. All right, first half highlights, here we go. We've been doing a food tour this entire season. Start in the 16th minute, it's Guido helping to create through Moon down the left. The problem that plagued Loyal the entire first half was their inability to make quick fire decisions. More importantly, move at a rapid pace into the final third, and that was the issue. But good job here, step by Guido, gets the run by Moon, and more importantly, gets the overlapping run out of the midfield by Charlie Adams. Can't connect, but they needed more of it, and that is how they are going to find success. Advanced roll, Malik Johnson, tackle. 
No, seriously, puts it in the right share lot. It's not a bad effort, to be fair, but it's a half chance from about 25 yards out. Can't connect. As you step here, this is the concern that we had. Blake comes high. We know that's going to happen, but when you turn it over in that fashion, the back line is spread very thin. Then it's miscommunication. Kyle Adams and Alejandro Guido not on the same page. Instead of one of them getting there possibly and 2v1 and a chance to close them down, they both get it wrong. Barry gets it right for his ninth of the season in the 36th minute off the great ball in by Cam Lindley. And then just unfortunate here for Kyle Adams. Trying to make amends for his mistake. He's in the right spot. The problem is, is one of the nominees for goalkeeper of the year, Jeff Caldwell, makes a fantastic save to keep the shutout intact. Dev, it was funny, and speaking to Brendan Burke, he said, we don't care, have 60% of the ball. That's what they've given so far, and they still lead. My issue is, and I said it going into the dressing room, 37 minutes. They went 37 minutes, San Diego Loyal, without challenging the goalkeeper. That's not okay. That's not appropriate at all. With Moon, Moshevani, Among, Guido, Blake, there's no reason you can't get up there and provide yourself some chances. All right, Ziggy's enjoying this so far. Landon Donovan a little less so. Colorado Springs has the lead at halftime. The second half is coming up next. The pride of Guinea, Haji Berry, 25 goals, ties the league scoring record last year, and that's his brother in town this week, wearing his brother's shirt. Haji Berry, that looks like a scepter. That is some kind of trophy. The MVP of the league finally gets the trophy to go with it, pregame ceremony here at Widener Field. And a lot of pride from the Reagan family, from Brendan Burke and his staff, and this entire city of Colorado Springs, model citizen, model player.
And he has scored tonight in the 36th minute to put the switchbacks ahead. Are the loyal on the comeback trail? Into the second half we go from Widener Field in downtown Colorado Springs. Great article from Nicholas Murray about Haji's brother arriving and another MVP caliber kind of night. Her player scored twice. The win against Sacramento last time out. Switchbacks up to second in the conference. Four points off the pace of San Antonio. Loyal sitting in third, nine points off first, just five away from Colorado Springs. And here where the top seven in each conference make the playoffs, the top team gets an elusive bye. Next three will play the first round of the playoffs at home. Lindley. Oh, that's excellent. Galena arriving along with a bow. And Barry, ball slid, knocked off the post. Galena arrives. Link Johnson trotting up the field. Early test for Coke Vegas. Flag down. Malik Johnson on the move again. Ball ahead. Barry catches up, turns on Colin Martin. Slid by Mahoney, turning a mo. A mo fires appeal for a handball. Slips out a mo. Went down. Guido involved, and now ahead Galena. Michi Galena denied by Coke Vegas. This series of events here for Colorado Springs. Got to be real careful if you're loyal that you don't let this thing go any further. The amount of pressure coming, they've changed. The higher line is there. This is the attacking unit that we see normally in the championship. Disgusted, injuries, lack of depth because of it. The match congestion, but their willingness right now, opening couple of minutes to stay high. The balls, absolute class that are coming in right now, distribution-wise. Lindley, Mahoney, nice and crisp. Look at the amount of players you have and options moving forward. Echeverria rolling for a Mo, touched by Adams to Vegas. After his pitch forked forward by the aforementioned Haji Berry's ability to be part of that passing attack, playing the final ball rather than scoring it. Just wouldn't let it go, would they? First great ball buzz by Matt Mahoney down into the corner. Barry had to hold up play. And that's the difference. The major one, not just Haji Barry stepping on it, but within the team, the tactical decisions that are being made this season. Not as many multi-goal games as we saw in the wide open fashion that was the 2021 season. But within that, a better understanding of the roles that needed to be played. Step on it, wait for reinforcements. The ability to recycle side to side. Very different compared to last season. Also defensively, you got to give them a lot of credit. They blocked it up. And yet they get a goal, and they never seem satisfied either. Oxford handled that well. Throw for Nick Moon. Diego Luna was Moon Boy. This is Moon Man. Guido popped it wide, rolled in front, and Mochabani hit the post. Turning Blake. Had a Mong making that run centrally as well. Much better, but this just comes down to the numbers on the outside. We said a lot of the game has been played there, but when Charlie Adams comes, nobody steps because they're too worried about Nick Moon. Mahoney late to drift over. He's worried about the run down into the channel. Midfielder up, beautiful ball back across. Tiny touch and the kiss of death to eliminate the equalizer. A post on both ends for two of the teams that convert more than a fifth of their chances. I said to you, though, 
coming into the second half off air. They got to find a way to create more of an attacking presence. I discussed the possibility of changes, but even if you don't make a personnel change, someone has to step up. Now, you would like it to be a mom. Moshe Bani can fit that role as well. He can operate anywhere that he wants within the front line. Nate Miller brought him over. His time at Lansing Ignite, taking steps every single season. Adams, header speared in! Kyle Adams, the finish for San Diego, and they pulled level. Adams squared. In the 51st. Vindication. The mistake that was in the 36th minute. He and Guido unburied. Finally gets it back. You got to ask. All due respect to Kyle Adams. Where's the marking? It's 2-1. How are you not stepping in here and challenging? Erdman and Matt Mahoney. Two of the constants for Brendan Burke. You just allow this header to go unchallenged at all. No reason that Kyle Adams can attack in this fashion. And yet... Plenty of space and time, steps right through, buries it in the bottom corner, and we're back to even. And with that luscious head of hair, second goal of the season, fourth of his championship career that dates back to 2018. Game on here in Colorado Springs. Adams isn't really missing the Alexi Lawless locks by much, is he? Oh, that's that's aggressive. Alexi had the the goatee as well. It just added, you know, plus the bracelets. I'll never forget. And it's amazing the impact that players can have on young kids. I'll remember coming up, had the opportunity to see the start of MLS within the United States. They were down in South Florida. I saw them in preseason. Gave Alexi Lawless a rubber band. My friend and I both gave him one that had our initials on it. His right arm, I believe it was his right. He's got two, so pick one. Yeah. Used to be littered with bracelets. And you would have yarn and rubber bands and hair ties because kids would give them to him. And he would he never took them off. He wore them. Saw him mid-season. I believe they were playing the Fusion. Walked out, saw him in the dressing room afterward. Lexi, Lexi, got to come up next to him. Drifted his arm back. There it was. Wow. So he's got a long way to go, though a lot of respect for Kyle Adams. I don't think he has the bracelet anymore, by the way. I doubt it. <laughs> I doubt it. After a lengthy moment with the athletic trainer, Among inches over to the touchline. And the switchbacks get to work. Guido. Guido service skims away. Corner. Moon was approaching. Ziggy all dressed up for the holiday, inches toward the corner flag. Who knows if that mountain goat can have any effect in swing corner. Charlie Adams found Kyle Adams on the last corner from this end. It's a San Diego foul. Erdman's incensed behind the scenes. Felt like an elbow was thrown here a bit from Kyle Adams. Not that far off. There's definite contact on the back post run. Very similar situation. Look at the mismatch. Matt Mahoney. Interesting that they've gone Erdman in zone here. There's a little follow-through, a little how-do-you-do. 
Erdman's the zone player. Mahoney is the one who's man marking right now. Matt Mahoney, 5'11. Adams, 6'2 plus. Malik Johnson, look out. And a Mo is there. Corrals the ricochet. Hodge. Delina, Central, Lindley. Peel, Hodges, offside. Playoff battles begin to heat up to playoff hopefuls meeting on ESPN Deportes with Rio Grande Valley welcoming the Las Vegas Lights to the Southern Texas region. Sunday, July 17th at 7.30 p.m. Eastern. We'll see it live on ESPN Deportes with our friends Jesus Acosta, Jose Rodriguez on the call. And then Dev, three days later, you and I are off to Louisville, Kentucky. Get to see Phoenix Rising, who got a, a really important draw over on ESPN Plus over the weekend. Take on Louisville City. Are you a window or aisle guy? Aisle. Always? Yeah. You're over six feet tall. You know what I'm talking about. I do. I do. Although I have an issue on the bulkheads because if I go aisle, then the TV comes up in front of me down by the leg. I'm not up for that. Understood. Johnson. Barry. Malik Johnson. Rolled it through. There wasn't a run at the back post. This is better from Malik Johnson. I talked to you about as he comes further into the attack. He's got to have some patience and an understanding of where it is going to be the next man up. Great one, too. You don't see him cut inside a lot. He's very vertical in his ways because of the amount of speed that he possesses in his repertoire. Usually that one, two is being sprayed down into the corner. Instead, great run to pump back inside and then make the step behind the back line. Martin. Adams. Moon. Moon diagonal. Taken in by Hodge. Area. Flipped over to Blake. Goes equalized in the 51st through Adams. Quieting for a moment at least. Near capacity crowd here in Colorado Springs. Mahoney. Here comes San Diego. Tumi Moshabani nearly for a Mong. Vital intervention out to Galena. The return, Galena on the run. Slid back by Stoneman, who's on a yellow card. He had to get that right. Long run for a Mo. Shabani.
Colin Martin. Pressure constricting. Blake thrust away by Erdman. Nice little assist by Nate Miller on the throw in. Assistant coach picked it up and got them going the other way. It's got to be better here, the marking. Goal given up, another opportunity a couple minutes later. This has been the key emphasis for Brendan Burke. Very difficult to break them down in open play. Dead ball situation's a whole nother story. Jack Blake. Guido Amo. Came off of Blake. Moshabani tees that up. Martin Moshabani soars. Turning effort toward goal and Caldwell take over. Guido from the six. And now Colorado Springs can counter. Galena, blink and you'll miss it. Barry rounds the corner. Galena holds it up. Kept in Galena. Moon goes down. He drew the whistle. This is much better from San Diego Loyal. The difference has been previously they were settling. You have to commit to your identity, which is possession, quick ball movement, and decision making. Once you reach the final third, the rotation has to remain constant. That's exactly what goes on here. Moshevani out of the pocket. Guido plays a more advanced role, and you're able to pick him out on the inside. It's not a goal, but this is what Landon Donovan talks about. You commit to the process and stay true, home or away. The first real time we've seen them step into the box and look like themselves. Ball ahead down the right side, dummy through, Adams further. Oh, they pull ahead, Moshe Bonney. San Diego on the road from a goal down, pull ahead of Colorado Springs. Magnificent from San Diego Loyal. Just talked about the identity. Watch the motion. Blake up a little bit. The rotation out by Mong, and now they're off to the races. Guido has assumed the number 10 role, and as he comes, Watch who ends up in the box. Great dead ball, Charlie Adams. He's played a higher line because of the willingness of Martin to operate deeper under the six. But as he comes here, you don't pick up the delayed run. Semi-late entry into the box. You can't pick up the six that has now stepped into an 8-10 roll. The overlap comes from Moshevani. He was the difference maker almost on the chance about three minutes prior, and now he's put him out in front. His fourth of the season, 63rd minute. The assist from Adams, his second assist of the night, his third assist of the season. Galena back for Barry. Barry cuts inside, still alive, bounces, appeal for a handball penalty. Stoneman's extended arm, Mahoney coming forward, they've sent him off. Stoneman was on a yellow card from the 42nd minute. Second time Stoneman's been set off this year. And this game just went zero to 100 real quick. And they're punching back here, Colorado Springs. It's much of the same tempo we saw in the opening 10 minutes to start this second half. The response immediate, you stretch the game. Long ball over the top with Galena. The combination play by Haji Berry. Watch the perseverance. 
This touch, the third one, gets away from him. But as it comes through, Jack Blake's just trying to get this away from the danger area. You can't get any clearer than this. He's late to react. The ball's in an unnatural position, extended away from the body, right in front of the referee. Because of the yellow card, easy to make the decision to send him packing. There's that man, Haji Berry. Does he get to double figures today? Tolke Vegas has faced 10 penalties according to Transfer Market. He has stopped two. Stopped one of two this season since arriving in San Diego. Haji Berry, an otherworldly talent, 25 goals a season ago. Tonight with his brother in the crowd, he accepts the league's MVP award from last season. And does he have another brace in him as he did against Sacramento? Dev, what do you think of this move? Boxall's coming on, and that means Barry just has to stand there and wait. That's going to ice him a little bit. They're going to allow it to occur right now. That's the hope here for Lennon Donovan and Nate Miller. You would imagine you are going to lose a massive attacking presence that has had such an impact on the second half. Your goal scorer to get you out on the beautiful ball by Charlie Adams. I have to add the defender to the back line with the way that the potency of Colorado Springs is taking shape here over the past couple of minutes. No one more potent than Haji Berry, the reigning MVP, to pull the switchbacks level against Vegas. Berry drills it. 2 2. Cue the lights. Number 10. You can change the identity, but you can't take the prowess out of Haji Berry. In the final third, one of the best in the business. Handball, absolutely. Yellow card, 100%. Down to 10 from the 10. Now even for Colorado Springs. Now 10 goals on the season. That's tied for third in the league. Tied with six assists to lead this team in the USL Championship atop assists. The bad, bad man known as Haji Berry is back. A double-double seems like it's a foregone conclusion this year. Among. back up and about it's a player that Brendan Burke really didn't want to give up on Brendan Burke called Landon Donovan watched a bit of film realized he could really help take it away by a mo Barry a mo lost his footing collected by Vegas the coconut monster got him Dev, a lot of teams go on the road, they're down a man, they just lost their lead, and they wouldn't be playing out of the back like this. That is not how Landon Donovan goes. They are not going to change. No, they won't change. And obviously with a substitute, now you bring him onto the back line, Nico Voxel, and the understanding of what has to be, I will say the physical side of things, take a different look here in the absence. With all due respect to Grant Stoneman, Voxel, really good in the one-on-one -on -one situations of putting a body on the man. And that's going to be a spot here you really want to watch as the attack has opened up. Here comes that high line that I talk about. 
They don't press. They push you into poor decisions. They get you into that one-on-one -on -one isolation where you've got to beat the man yourself or go direct up over the top. Hockford saying, I didn't hold him. He held me. back behind the play. We were just getting word that a change was about to come in the form of Elvis Amo. But with the injury, Malik Johnson going down, could force your hand in a different direction. We mentioned how short the bench is for Colorado Springs. They're trying to figure out what to do here tactically. That's the conversation. This is an easy switch if Johnson has to come off. Ryan goes over onto the right flank. We have a youngster and academy player Kyler Tate. We mentioned in the first half on the bench, but this is not the time or place to make your championship debut, regardless of talent. And you know, Dev, you think about Tate, San Diego's been really clear about it. Both these sides feel like there's a lot of talent in the region. And we just saw Orange County make another major sale overseas. We saw how good Diego Luna looked in the under 20. Eventual Olympic qualifying team for the U.S. It was sold for a quarter million to RSL by El Paso. Colorado Springs in a perfect world is a very ambitious selling club, whether it's players they bring in and get to the next level or players that they develop. Great talking point as well with Issa Ryan. Player identification was something we spoke about with Brendan Burke in the opening 45 minutes. Philadelphia Youth Academy product, played for Bethlehem Steel, then took off when played for John Kerr Jr. at Duke University. ACC Rookie of the Year. Didn't think the professional route was right immediately. Goes to college, then turns back to the professional game. The departure of Brendan Burke recognized the fact that there was an opportunity to continue to progress his career. Brings him to Colorado Springs. Now a chance inside 20 minutes to help go find that go-ahead goal. Hodge goes flying in. Couldn't take it away from Among. Barry got a piece, touched over by Galena. Erdman started it the other way. Galena central. Barry's there on the lead by Ryan. Barry! Nearly a hat trick hero. Still plenty of time to get it done, too. Change coming for San Diego in a moment. This is one thing that has changed for Colorado Springs. It's the understanding that stepping off the back line is okay, whether it's Jimmy Ockford or Dennis Erdman. Much more of a frequent occurrence where they pop up into that space just behind the sixes, Mike, and it allows them to push more numbers forward. 3v2 turns into the easy space to step into for Hachi Berry on the back post. Conway's inclusion, another player who's managed to affect the game on the offensive end. San Diego playing with 10. Hodge. Foul from Erdman. Erdman shown a very rapid yellow card. He's Erdman's a, a man couple, after your own heart. He's made a couple of friends here tonight, Mike, with the challenges inside the box from set pieces. This is what I talked about. He's trying to step in here, win this, and then spring the attack the other way. Certainly deserving of a yellow. Charlie Adams, regardless of the height differential, lets him know that that's not going to be a good sight for him moving forward. Okay, Grant Stoneman, the yellow card, and then quite unnecessarily with the challenge in the first half, the second off the handball in the 65th minute that allows Haji Berry to equalize.
Another busy moment for the athletic trainer. 2-2. Two, two. Dev, we can update this a little bit. El Paso pulled up with San Diego. San Diego's touched the gas again. There's Louisville and Tampa Bay, arguably the, the two best teams in the Eastern Conference, although Memphis and some others would definitely take offense to that. There was a pretty telling stat for me that I saw coming in about when goals are scored within games. And when you take a look at that list right there, this is where I'm going with it. It's it's fast starts on either side of the whistle. So the start of the first half, then start of the second half. Come out of the dressing room with an intention of what your game plan is and then find a way to go execute it. First 15 minutes of each half. Highest scoring teams, San Diego, Colorado Springs, Louisville City. It's a pretty telling stat when you think about it in the grand scheme of things. Early and often, it turns out. Header came off a Mong who is able to continue with the yellow card, never had to come off the field. Javeria, that ball came in with too much heat. Guido leading. Adams spins it wide. Rolled across Guido. Moon. That's a tackle. A clean one. Welcome. Welcome to the right side. They allowed the first couple of minutes for Evan Conway to stay on this right hand flank as a substitute. I was surprised because he's primarily on the left. That kick out. You do wonder, watch the tail end of this tackle. That's beautifully done. That right leg that flips back around in front of the AR. Nick Moon's got a point here. The two foot. I don't mind it when he goes to the ground, but when you sweep that leg around, Mike, and you come that high, surprise the AR doesn't raise the flag for a foul. left the building. He came back on side and then swung his run through. That's what he thought. The problem is he never fully gets back in this situation. Acreage between he and Nico Boxel. But how smart is this step by Nico Boxel to push up into space? Again, when you flatten out this three, especially when you've gone down to 10 men, a lot more emphasis in the individual moments and how good you can be to help your team. If Nico Boxel doesn't take that quick three steps to push him into an offside position, he's free and clear. Delina lines up Moon. Barry arrives, tees up Lindley, kept it moving. Echeverria, Mahoney forward, Ryan. Switchbacks go to the bench. That's Carlton Belmar, the 2015 League Rookie of the Year. If they can ever get Belmar at his absolute peak, it's a scary, scary thought. Playing for Grenada's senior national team now. His dad, a naval man. a couple of seasons back where you could have easily said he was one of the most potent attackers in the entire league. Supporting Kansas City took notice, put him on a full MLS contract, loaned him to Swope Park Rangers, and it was his time there that allowed him to get that chance with Nashville and MLS. Didn't exactly work out. Martin, 
Martin bouncing, giant rebound, San Diego ahead again, down a man, they've come back, Evan Conway. He's won the League One final in Omaha, he's scored in a final, and he's celebrating with a little bit of cheese. 3-2 San Diego. What perseverance by San Diego Loyal. Watch the back post though. Matt Mahoney, gotta be better. Overcommits to the inside. You've got the defensive numbers here. You don't need to step in. Both your center backs and Tristan Hodge have the space locked down. The more that he comes to the inside, the easier it is for Conway to step into this. The save is perfect by Jeff Caldwell. The problem is he's expecting the back post help from his defender. Doesn't get it. Not gonna get much easier for Evan Conway. What a comeback this could be for San Diego Loyal. Down to 10, game time goal, and yet with nine minutes in, they've got an opportunity to steal something here. We came into this game saying, are you not entertained? It's what we say seemingly after every time you watch these two high-flying attacks get after it. Surely Brendan Burke can't quite believe it. They've won every game in which they've scored first. They've won every game in which they led at the half. They checked both those boxes tonight. And now they're trailing. You know, things have changed over the past couple of matches. Referencing the way that they give up goals, Mike, going into the San Antonio game, seven of 17 goals had come from set-piece situations. You could barely break this team down in open play, and yet the past couple of matches, you've seen that. Hartford Athletic did it. San Diego Loyal have certainly done it here tonight. And yet, even in open play, it still comes down to the detrimental decisions on their accord. They got themselves into that problem. Now, respectfully, San Diego Loyal did a really good job in how they rotated the ball. But that's a simple defensive mistake. Stay where you're at, mark the player down, and the rest will come. Woo! Belmar. Belmar. Did that come off of Adams? Yes, it did. This is what we were used to seeing. 2017, 2018, saw 10 goals and 20 regular season appearances for the then Swope Park Rangers, now sporting Kansas City, too, even with the tug. Professionally done by Kyle Adams here. He gets away with a tiny little tug to bring himself back in. And now that big body, great defending. The one-on-one, -on -one, you push him to the byline, push him away from the danger area. It allows the runs in behind defensively to help you as well. The recovery, Boxel, Colin Martin, everybody, all hands on deck for Loyal. Andrew Carlton replaces Thomas Among. Corner, Colorado Springs. Over Erdman, finds Galena. Pushed off by Carlton, free kick to the switchbacks. Hands to the head of Elijah Martin. Elijah Martin set up on the back post with the corner that's whipped in, drifting to the left here. I still go back to the fact the decisions that are being made within this game, you don't need to leave your feet in this situation. This is a last-ditch, outstretched effort by Elijah Martin, and yet he's still got two players over his left shoulder that if the run does continue, Mike, you don't have to leave your feet. Stand him up, pass him off, or both of you converge. Instead, you've given Colorado Springs an excellent opportunity from right around 25 yards out. Some of the deadliest ball strikers in the championship want to have their way right now. Deb, there could only be one. Close enough. There could be only one. We'll get there. 200 more reps together, we'll get you there. Yep. Oh, it's Lindley off the wall. Ball skip out of play with five minutes and likely a good amount of stoppage remaining. What a story this is. Aaron Wheeler hadn't played as a professional since 2017 at Penn FC. 
He goes to the Barca Academy as an assistant coach down in Arizona. He stayed fit. He worked on his coaching license. He was around Brendan Burke. He always wanted to coach him, never had the chance. He said, hey, come have lunch with, with me. Bring your wife, Ashley. We'll talk about it. He got about five minutes in. He goes, oh, my gosh, I think I got him. <laughs> Here he is playing on national TV again. San Diego's looking for a fourth that could be some really valuable insurance. Carlton, Guido. Belmar stepped in, he won it. If Aaron Wheeler can come back, you can do it too, right? Yeah. I'm, I'm pretty sure that I couldn't negotiate my medical bills into a contract at this point in time. I was putting kids stuff together yesterday. I could barely get out of bed this morning. Ball bouncing through. Watch out. It's Wheeler. Touched out by Adams. A world of time and a corner coming for Colorado Springs. Lindley will step forward to take it. Lindley delivers, got over Vegas, falls in front, sliding effort off target. It was Wheeler looking for his moment. Was that the only one left is the question mark. Again, the marking, look at the back post. How do you get away with that? Shove on Evan Conway, pushes him right round. Good job on the back side of it, drifting back through. And when you're a player, Mike, who hasn't had a ton of reps, you've been out of the game for that long, mentally you rush things. You don't have that same level-headed processing that you go through day in and day out with tons of repetition. He just rushes it, form gets away. That's why his body, he's reaching and drifting back instead of trying to step through this. Elijah Martin is down being attended to. Even if this ball hits the back of the net, you have a really good argument that there should have been a foul called on Oxford in the middle of all of it as he grabbed around the shoulders, it appeared, of Elijah Martin, who Adam Smith out in Fresno was able to re-spark his career now down in San Diego. Watch the one before, too, just behind. Wheeler goes on Conway. Ockford, the left arm. It's right in front of the referee. Probably doesn't get enough credit, Elijah Martin, for everything that he brings to San Diego Loyal. Some of the change has been directly at that left back spot. Usually it's an over rotation. When you watch the team break down at the right back spot, early on it was a balance where they were willing to shift side by side. As Eliza Martin has progressed through his career, we've seen the Galaxy Youth product move into Galaxy 2, Los Dos, and his time under Adam Smith and Fresno. Now with San Diego Loyal, much better in that lockdown defender that you need. And also because of his height, and you get down into a three, Great spatial awareness and closing down players in open field. You could easily see five or six minutes. These two sides look like a game of e-football. Video game numbers all season. Two of the top three teams in the ever competitive Western Conference. There are some 
beastly teams right beneath them starting to come up through the surface of the playoff line. Seven added minutes. Upfield over Wheeler, Adams. Held in. Conway is the man of the moment for San Diego. Taken away. Brief respite, a foul one by Ryan. Catch the arm of Adams. It didn't, but it is a corner. I'm not so sure. Uh, this looked to be like it touched the hand of Kyle Adams. The question is, how far off the torso is it? That doesn't get much more clear to me personally. The one issue you would say is corner here. Header finds Galena with all this space. Galena unleashes. Referee had a really difficult angle on that. Forward header for Belmar. Offside. The one thing that you would say about the no call here for Kyle Adams, it definitely touches the hand, but they've sort of removed that gray area of the unnatural position. The arm itself right up next to the body. The referee's interpretation of that distance off of his frame and the linesman is subjective. And so you'd have to ask them as to whether or not they believe it. Galena, he's had a couple of strikes tonight, namely three from about 20, 25 yards out or so. Absolute rockets that should be hitting the nylon. Instead, great defensive recoveries to allow them half chances that spring off and go the other way. Midway point of stoppage time. Near the midway point of the regular season for everybody in the championship. Two teams that have been supremely impressive. San Diego down a man, a second yellow that led to a penalty. Colorado Springs led. They trailed. Barry equalized at the spot. Conway, the go-ahead goal. A kick into Guido. Which pocket is this? It's a yellow to Galena. Galena was trying to play quick here. And a little pullback by... Alejandro Guido, it's a good job by Michi Galina trying to stand him up. Another situation where you've got the sideline as your friend. You don't need to step in like that. Watch the ball here, though. Guido's wrong, trying to play. See, the whistle had already blown. Tristan Hodge got involved, too. The argument from Brendan Burke was that Guido got himself into trouble. The problem is, is there's an emotional response on the backside by both Galina and Tristan Hodge.
Discussion continues. Guido's back up. Might go past the seven now. Conway scoring the eighth goal by a substitute for San Diego all season. That's most in the championship. Is it enough to secure all three points here? Move within a point of Colorado Springs. East sides play again on July 18th down at Torero Stadium in front of that exuberant crowd. I didn't know Lucky M. Cassano was on this team. <laughs> <laughs> That's a deep cut. Uh, of course, the reference is Tampa Bay Rowdies player. All-time leader in USL championship history. Goals coming off the bench as a substitute. The clock says a minute. There might be a bit more. Lindley, Barry. Tries to play in for Wheeler. Allows Galena back to Wheeler. Slides. Touchdown in front. Kept alive for Barry. And now the whistle. Referee gestured to his arm. They should have let it run here. Haji Berry right outside the top of the box. And Brennan Burke saying what happened. I would start with your own players. Great job here by Mishi Galina. The unselfish nature could have continued the run. Got to let that go though. Clear path to Haji Berry to step right onto the penalty mark and bury this thing. Is there? I don't see anything in that. If he's pointing to the arm, the ball bounces up and catches him on the torso human gift machine Brendan Burke supplies again we will go past the seven minutes what a high wire act Wheeler swings through clearance kept by San Diego Conway rolls it out and Elijah Martin powering downfield Floated back, first look at the watch. How much time is there really? Landon Donovan's watch continues to tick. His side on the precipice of a major road win. And a listless ball that Moon siphons off. Turning Adams. Taken away. Is this the moment for the switchbacks? Waving everybody forward, Lindley, no. Kept by Mahoney. Lindley again. Slid through, didn't find Barry. Surely that must be enough for San Diego. All the way down to Caldwell. Header up, header away. Clip to the halfway line. Approaching 99 minutes. Another look at the watch. Guido pirouettes. And there's the full-time whistle in San Diego. Down a man. Get a smile from their manager, Landon Donovan. Within a point of second place and a win at Colorado Springs. What a turnaround for Loyal. I'm not talking about the game. Of course, you got to give credit. They went on the road April 30th, took down the mighty Rowdies. Then they only had one win in six. This team was struggling for form. And yet, now you've seen the offensive identity. You've seen them defensively lock things up. More importantly, this is a character game. Down to 10 men, give up the equalizer, and yet, you still find a way from your substitute, another one off the bench to lead the championship, to go get a game winner. Enjoy the rest of your 4th of July, no matter what time zone you're in. San Diego gets goals tonight from Adams, Moshevani, and the winner from Conway. For entire team in Colorado Springs and beyond, Devin Kerr alongside Mike Watts saying so long for now.